everyone, and welcome to another episode of the A and A Show. And this is our Disney Renaissance episode part two. I'm your girl Avia. Welcome, foolish mortals. <laughs> I'm Aaron. You know it's October. You yes. Know, founded mansion. You know. You know yes. A little, 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 little some some for the <laughs> for the for the girlies and the homies, as one of our own would say. Yes. Remember when we went to the, on the haunted mansion ride in Disney? In Disney <laughs> Iconic. 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 Even though the Paris one is more iconic, but that's neither here nor there. Mm. Period. Period. Phantom Manor's where is that? Mm-hmm. So where do where do we leave off in part one? We 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 ran off and talked about the problematic. That is Pocahontas. Yes, yes, mm. we did speak on that. We mm. did speak on that. Mm. But well, this this next film, it like Pocahontas. Well, pretty much all the Disney Renaissance films, it's based on something, a classic novel, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, and of course we know that the movie is not similar to the novel because it's, there's a certain Heartbreaking is <laughs> but the soundtrack to this film is impeccable. Like Chef impeccable. Kiss impeccable. Because like when I say the first six minutes, if the first mm-hmm. six minutes don't give you chills and goosebumps, nothing will. Because I remember mm-hmm. when I was a kid, that used to freak me out every time I watched it because of how yeah. dark. It was like a woman gets killed in like the first four minutes, and you're on like, the doorstep of a church, what? no less. <laughs> the cathedral, like man, no, the like for me, you know, when you like even at the very beginning when you hear the the little um, melody of yes. someday, mm-hmm. and it's like it's the choir, and all mm-hmm. of a sudden, boom, da, da, da. like. Ooh. And then it goes to Claude Pell sing, Pell sing. Right. now here riddled guess if you no. can no. the bells no. No. It's like <gasps> what Melodic. the yeah. fisherman yeah. fishes the baker man bakes and, bakes. <laughs> and Belle like, is just you know chilling in Notre Dame. You know, she's just oh, walking right. past and then they got a dead Pumbaa there, you know. I peeped <laughs> that. I peeped that Disney. I saw, I saw what you animated in there. You know, who, who knew that Belle's poor provincial town was Paris, France this whole time? Right. Right. <laughs> and it's just like, when, like, the thing I love about, you know, Hunchback in Notre Dame is that just the, it sets the tone of something that Disney was trying, a direction that Disney was trying to go. They still try to make it, you know, friend, mm-hmm. you know family friendly, but going to a place that they haven't really gone in a while since the black cauldron right and i'm gonna be honest this is probably one of my favorite movies of the disney renaissance just because of how dark and how far they go Mm -hmm. yeah i think and what's crazy i don't think let me rephrase that i think that some of the general audience would disagree with you but Mm -hmm. just for the music alone like that kicks it up a few mm-hmm. notches, you know. If if we go with some debates, this is why I kept saying with a with an iconic debate about two Disney movies that we'll be actually getting into very yes, soon. I'm ready for that. <laughs> um, you know, Hunchback and Beauty and the Beast are like Hunchback, Beauty and the Beast, and um, Lion King are like right there with mm-hmm. each other because mm-hmm. it just it it's the choir for me. It it really yeah. is. And like the lyrics are fantastic. Yeah. Like topsy turvy. Like topsy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On the year of 360. Mm-hmm. Like, no, 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 no. God help the outcast. The outcast. Like that. Oh my beautiful. God. beautiful. You know. Beautiful. Like there's a really there's a deleted song called Someday that um she was supposed to sing. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Ooh, why was I finna call that woman Cleopatra? No, I'm good. It's real. <laughs> like, it's a day. It's a day, y'all. That's that's that retrograde on you. But like, there was a song that she was gonna sing someday, but they decided to go with God Help the Outcast. That was a. Uh, I feel like that was a bit the better, you know, the better beautiful. choice. 
Like it's so like just and the way like the, the once again the choir like how you have all the other people who's praying at the same time as she is and then it just like you get the crescendo you know coming in around the end and you're just like oh my god it's like an experience and of course you know we have the iconic oh, amazing oh, oh no <laughs> see i would go a step further no i was gonna say the one before it um heaven's light like yeah yeah, because I mean, he knew shouting. he wasn't gonna get the girl. He knew he wasn't right. Get the girl. He knew. I know. I never know that warm and loving. Ooh, was like, lyrics. oh, quasi, poor quasi. Like, I just wanted to give him a hug. Right. I want to give him like it's gonna be okay, quasi. Right. And then, but I how, mean, his homeboy was how they transformed. Right. It's like how they transform. How you know the archbishop, you know, is leading the monks right. chanting, and it goes to that right. into how fire like that transition was amazing. Yeah, like, we go like Beata Maria. Maria. It's like, like, like dude, <laughs> brother, <laughs> calm down. Right, you're obsessed with this woman. Like, and that's that's one of the best Disney villain songs. Period. In Hellfire, yes. Yeah. Yes, because. It shows, you know, his obsessiveness and like mm -hmm. if he can't have her, nobody can have her, and I'll right. burn her. Like, right? Like, Man, that, like that was. Just, imagine being like six years old, like, whoa, he gonna do what? Right? He's saying what? He talking and, about hell, damnation, <laughs> eternal damnation, damnation. What? Just like how he was, <laughs> abomination. Oh yeah. <laughs> B. I forgot what it was with B, but it was like D, damnation, E, e eternal, eternal damnation. damnation. <laughs> oh, no, Out There, the song Out There. Yeah, beautiful song. My God. Like, it's just Fuzzy like, Moto it's got just the like pipes. he got the pipes, got the pipes. Can we just talk about the voice casting for this? It is yeah. amazing. For me, more is Esmeralda, Tom Pulse is yeah. quasi. We got uh, Kevin Klein as Phoebus. Like, yeah. And the iconic man whose name I cannot think of at the moment as but I know his voice. Solo. I know every time. Yeah, he's, like he's, he's he's literally in every animated movie of the '90s in some shape or form. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I feel so bad. I am going to totally not butcher his legacy. I'm totally not going to butcher that man's legacy. Tony J. God, Tony J. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like yeah, and and the fact that like. Everyone basically sang their own parts. They did. Like they a did. true Broadway musical. Like you don't get that, that was a lot. Straight Broadway, you know. I, I just like when I found out that was the me singing "God Help the Outcast." I was like, right, right, and that's what? why you know when you do animated films, you need to get you know actual voice actors and actresses and mm -hmm. not just celebrities. Enough about Pixar, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get in them in a minute. Um, like, but no, Hunchback, beautiful, just beautiful. Yeah, just like the music, even the art, like everything about this movie. You know, I think it was, I think it came out too soon. I I believe it did because it it was like the second lowest. Uh, mm -hmm. it made the second lowest amount at the box office that year right. of you know of the Disney right. Renaissance, and. I was like when I was a kid, I loved it. Like I had an Esmeralda yeah. tent. Like yeah. growing up, I had an Esmeralda tent, and I have, I still have my Esmeralda comforter. Like Period. I still have it. Is yeah, it I got. I think I got um, <laughs> that Quasimodo glass from Burger King still. Yeah. Oh, I remember those guys. I got the yeah. Jungle Book one. What's yep. It? I got that. One. I need to go in the kitchen because they're in my grandma's kitchen, so I need to look and see what other ones. Like <laughs> ooh, iconic, you know. I just. Like yeah, I really I think if Hunchback came out today from Disney the exact same way, it would probably win. You know, it would sweep. You know, the awards mm -hmm. for best animated feature, best music, best score, all of that. Like it would, it would sweep. And you know, I think what's really cool though is the people behind it realized that it is so amazing. You know, they ran to Germany and made it a Broadway musical called The Glock. By Notre Dame, and when I say, <laughs> y'all, 
like I love the music, you know, so, you know, not knowing a word they could, you know, they were saying because I couldn't mm -hmm. speak German, mm -hmm. but the play was darker. It followed, more, it was like the Disney film, but with more of Victor Hugo's novel, especially mm -hmm. around the end, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with the unfortunate bittersweet ending from mm -hmm. the book. You know, they kept it. And like the idea that the gargoyles notice how I did not mention a guy like you at all. Yes. But, yes. You know, the gargoyles, you know, like the gargoyles in the play, they actually were just a figment of Quasimodo's imagination, not like Disney magic, you know, mm -hmm. characters. Like it was, it's good. It's good. And like they even mix in God Help the Outcast and then give her a reprise with Someday while she's singing with Phoebus, mm -hmm. you know, knowing she's going to, you know, die. And I'm just like, and then the, once again, the choir, as you can, y'all, like every time I talk about like when something's really good, I bring up a choir. Um, the damn choir comes in with Esmeralda the next time around. She's saying God Help the Outcast and Someday. I'm just like, yeah, I, I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you the the. Okay, the, please do. Someday in German, like it's called Ein Mal. Like is Disney American Disney dropped the ball when they brought Punch Back to Broadway and didn't do that. They yeah, the ball. and the just the animation of the architecture of around God, yes. When, the when the statues, eyes, right when when uh, the Archbishop was of the eyes, yeah. Yeah. and then you can see the eyes bulging, just like right and the lightning. Like, Right. <sighs> and see those statues, you know, statues like that, you know, already freaked me out. So it's like seeing it in animation and it didn't look animated. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. Like you get lost in the film. Like it, it Hunchback did what it was supposed to do. It did. It really it did. did. Look how they I ate mean, that. Look how, look they, how ate they ate that. And I mean, the second movie under this, you know, it was switched movie. it up. Well, yep. we don't talk about Hunchback too. I mean, the, the, yeah, movie following, yeah, the movie following Hunchback did what it's supposed to do, and it was a nice change of pace because I think they realized it was a little too dark, mm -hmm. so they had to go back to form. And this was when, oh. in my opinion, in my opinion, I think <laughs> Disney animators and executives, not am executives, felt like they needed to be you know, on all the time, but damn it, it worked because Hercules. Can we just say, okay. The choir. We talk, the choir. Like, we, okay, we talked about, you know, last few episodes we talked about, um, uh, Little Shop of Horrors. We, we talked about Little Shop of Horrors and talked how, you know, that was the one that influenced them to, you know, to branch out and you know re restructure right. disney you saw it. if you didn't see it in any of them you definitely saw it with the good chorus because just how you know the guy comes in you know he narr starts narrating <laughs> and the dudes come in Long ago. Listen to him. he sounds like some great tragedy and then, up, <laughs> we'll take it from here darling like, <laughs> go girl we'll do 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 we are the music. like I, I can like they they were in their yeah. bag with the with with the intro like yeah. they like is like even though Hunchback of Notre Dame in my opinion has the best intro right. this was definitely next to it like this was definitely this is like the, Lion King like, right like, like, like iconic right there, <laughs> like, right there. Yeah. it's just how they introduce the music because you know okay these ladies are in charge they're gonna tell us the story right. how it's supposed to be told okay <laughs> let's go <laughs> and then right. seeing and then yeah. seeing five black women mm -hmm. different shapes different body sizes different mm -hmm. hairstyles like it mm -hmm. was everything to me as a five mm -hmm. as a five year old it's like yeah. how do we like that's my first time really seeing black women animated anywhere really anywhere esmeralda was the closest because her body tent that, right that that was it they right. were trying to say something there they were trying to say something okay <laughs> okay they it were sick like, but yeah and it's like this is what disney needed this was right. a good change of pace for them yep. and, and how it goes to you know them saying an intro to like doo -doo -doo -doo, the score doo -doo -doo. oh my god yes they yeah. give us a church first. The horns, when the horns church. come in. 
Yeah. They took us to church. Yeah, they took, look, once again, <laughs> the choir. <laughs> <laughs> like, can we just say the fact that five black women sound like a choir? I mean, like a full mass choir for like 20 people, you know, the the talent that has. Mm-hmm. You know, the atom upness that it has. The social implications that has. Okay. <laughs> just iconic. You know, I mean, like, just, yeah. The moment, because I can, like, I can even think when I saw that thing in theaters, the moment, uh, I cannot think of all their names, but, you know, the one who was obviously based on of Whitney Houston, she's like, mm-hmm. we are the muses. God God is the the arts. And we're famous heroes. Heroes, heroes like, like Hercules. Hercules. Honey, you mean Hercules. Right. Oh, my that, music, music with his our that story. <laughs> that sets the tone right there. And you, and, they'll, and then they go in and the story, and then, like you said, they go to church, and then we see mm-hmm. baby Hercules. But, you know, once, you know, I wish that they would have given them more songs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just like I, mm-hmm. if it made like more gospel truth, like because mm-hmm. you know they went to three parts, mm-hmm. and you know they pop back up with uh, Zero to Hero, and, and I want to say I'm in love, right? And then, and then Star, is, Star born. is Born, but like I, they could have just had the whole soundtrack. Like it Phil really didn't need one. a song. Phil didn't need a song. Phil didn't need a song. I mean, that's all I'm gonna say. It was fun. Was he, he, he didn't. He, it was a fun song, and it, I mean, if it wasn't in there, it would be okay. Like if, like if that yeah. song, was, I would have, I would have liked the, would have liked the, uh, the muses to have done a, a song talking about like, like a zero to hero. But watch him training, like as, right, you know, and then hell, even Herc didn't need to sing "Go to Distance." <laughs> I'm gonna just say it. I'm gonna just say it. He, you know, he. It was a riffraff street rat. I don't buy that. Buy that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, but the one, good thing, the one good thing about another soundtrack that we won't get into it. Well, we'll get into it, but later it goes into the debate that we've been having for the past few weeks. Yeah. It's it's good to hear the character singing. Like it's good. It's right. good to see that right. interaction. True. Because you know when Meg sings, I won't say I'm in love. And it's iconic. Like, iconic. If there's a prize for rotten judgment. Yeah. I guess I've already won that. It's like the lyrics of each song. Two uses as a statue yeah. looking at her. And yes. then when Meg turns around, they're just like, it, like it was perfect. Like it was fantastic. Yeah. And then, you know, we go to distance. I know her, her didn't need to sing, but I'm glad he did. Because it's I like, we, we get to see, you know, him feeling like he doesn't belong here in his own words. Like he's like, I know I'm meant for something different. Like, and it's time for me to, you know, figure that oh, out. That's my theme song, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am on my way. <laughs> it's like, and it's just Hercules was that breath of fresh air. Like, yeah. it is like, like this, even though, you know, Hera, you know, we all know that that's not really how Hera was. <laughs> uh, you know, we know. We know <laughs> the fact that he was like Hera. I mean, we yeah, know we they know, were a happy yeah. married couple. We know they were a happy married couple. We know that. We know that. <laughs> but you know, it is still a great way to at least introduce kids to mythology. At least a great right. first step to that. And you know, the song, like, like I said, the muse, the muses were a great way of telling story. Just like the little shop before is how you know. The Tashina Arnold and um, Tosh, uh, Tisha Campbell's character, and uh, they sang right. and told the story. So I was like, right. that's definitely something that they picked off of Little Shop of Horrors and and put that in there. And that's why I like. That's why I love her because the muses work. The actress singing works. Right. Like, you know, if not, if Hades had a hero, uh, a villain song. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they wanted to give it to him, but when they got James Wood, who uh, who made the character more comedic, like he was supposed to have like a be prepared type song when he was supposed to be this darker mm-hmm. villain, you know, but him just as like this lawyer, they tried to give him a song in the show, which actually is really good. Everybody should watch the show. The mm. The prequel series. Oh my God! The guy is so funny. 
<laughs> they should have had Aphrodite like be a main, like a main staple in the movie because that shit would have been hilarious. Mm-hmm. The fact that it's uh, mm-hmm. Lisa Kudrow playing her too, like it just, yeah, right. like Hercules. It was a, it was like you said, it's a breath of fresh air because it did something mm-hmm. different, you know. And I, and I, and uh, and I kind of like that. Even though the villain songs are like some of the best parts of Disney movies, uh, right after Hunchback, I think they realized that they couldn't top Hellfire, so the villains don't need a song for a while. Right. And, you know, just giving them, you know, a motif, you know, just some strings and, you know, some low strings and, you know, maybe an ominous choir. Like, it kind of worked because it let you know they meant business. But, mm-hmm. you know, another villain that didn't get a song, but they got a song about them, was in this next movie. <gasps> you know, talking about they had to get down to business to what defeat the mind. Okay. <laughs> this movie changed my life. Period. Mulan really changed my life because I remember my mom, you know, took me to go some, to, took me and my brothers to go see it, and I was just blown away because there's this heroine who doesn't wait for somebody to save her. She saves herself and she saved China. Like she didn't just help herself. She saved the world. And it's like you, you know, China at least like you don't see that that often. And it's the fact that she wasn't a Disney princess. She was just trying to fill in her father's place and you know show the world that she's more capable of what, what they think she is. And I really and I really felt that. Which is why I'm like I can watch Mulan all day, every day. And it shows that in honor to us all. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, she's you know, she doesn't really want to go to the matchmaker, but you know, she's getting primped and ready. <laughs> You know, doing stuff, doing something she doesn't want to do, and this is what you me to work with. Well, honey, I've seen worse. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's just you know, Mulan is she's not perfect. Like you, you like she definitely shows that she's not perfect. Like she messes up in the matchmakers. You know, you see it. No, not even there. You see it as soon as she wakes up. Like she has right. hair. Like you know, she wrote the uh, you know the, the final ammunition. Uh, Ammunition mm-hmm. like on her arm, on her arm. Like, like little brother, like she's trying to tie up, you know, little brother snacks so he can help her with her chores. Like you see that she is not perfect from the jump. Like you see, you see that, and you know, honor to us all just brings that all <laughs> into fruition. And you know, it's a, it's a, grip. I'm sorry, but the grandma's on beats of J. Oh my yes, for beauty. You must proudly show it. Now add a cricket just, just for, for luck. And even you can't blow it. I was like, dang, you my grandma think she's a screw up. Right. <laughs> That's I mean, you heard her calling on the ancestors when she was walking that line. Oh, the ancestor scene was hysterical. <laughs> yeah, That's hilarious. But there needs to be more scenes. Even, like and, that. Yeah, they tried to get Moosh a song too. They tried to give Musha a song that wouldn't it 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 wasn't it's, good. It okay. wasn't I heard it, it wasn't good. <laughs> like okay. it mm-mm. Eddie and, Murphy is a good comedian, but you know, unless he was gonna do party all the time in Mulan, which actually would have been really funny if he wasn't gonna do that, just it was no point. Mm-hmm. You know, but I mean when Sean you when when he said let's get down to business to defeat. The did they send me daughters when I asked, when I asked for sons? For sons. Like, classic. Like, Donny Osmond did the damn thing. I'll give it to him. He did. He did. He did. And can we also talk about a stable in the Disney Renaissance that we talked about in Aladdin? But Leah Salonga singing yeah. Reflection. Like, when I tell you that's probably one of the realest, like, I feel like Reflection and God Help the Outcast are probably two of the realest yeah. female Disney songs around this time. Mm-hmm. 
and like there was so much truth in that song yeah. and the fact that Christina Aguilera covered it you know for the soundtrack it's like and that was like her big What's single that like that she sings I see <laughs> Staring straight Period. Like, at me. like th- this is some of the realest stuff I've ever heard. And mm-hmm. and she killed it. Like we get so hard. she, you know, she she did absolutely amazing on that song. And, you know, she sang uh you no, know, she sang a whole uh, mm-hmm. jazz song, a whole uh, whole new world. And right. <sighs> just had to mention that. Just had had to, had it's, to it's the iconic song. That like any I want song going back to Little Shop Chorus, like somewhere that's green, you mm-hmm. know, it's supposed to convey the emotion where this woman or any character, you know, who just wants something is like they can't express any, they can't express it through words anymore. They just have to sing it. And when she says, Look at me, mm-hmm. you know, you may, think you, see, who, you may think you yeah. see who I really am, right? But you'll never know me. Like the real, like that's iconic. Like <laughs> you can't, like, that's that's Mulan as a character, you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I kind of bummed out they didn't do that in the Live action. We don't talk about that. <laughs> we, we don't I was about, about to say, but <laughs> it doesn't exist. So, mm. yeah, that Mulan was a, that was like if Pocahontas was considered the low point for many, many reasons, they mm-hmm. were definitely making a comeback. Mm-hmm. But then they just said, nope, characters ain't going to sing no more. And then, but we forgot one song. Before we move on to next, oh. one, a girl worth fighting We're for. Fighting for. <laughs> yep. that's was the like, <laughs> that was the last movie for a, a. Ooh, that was the last movie for a long time where the characters sang. Because mm-hmm, the Princess and the Frog was the. Yeah, because we don't talk about that one in two thousand four. Right, we don't. We do not. That doesn't exist. Oh my God! Wow. Yeah, Mulan was the last. Disney movie where the characters sang. Well, okay, technically, technically, in this next one, there is like one scene. Scatting. It's scatting. <laughs> I mean, do you really expect Rosie O'Donnell to just. <laughs> <her heart? laughs> yeah, Tarzan. Um, I like the soundtrack. Yeah, Phil Collins did the damn thing with the soundtrack. He did. And there's been a debate. Well, we'll get into the debate. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the soundtrack first, then we'll get into the debate. <laughs> oh, I mean, when it opens up with, you put your faith in what you what most you believe, believe in. in. Like, the world's one family. On. Now, and one the thing fire yeah. from yeah. the boat. Like, the intro is a great intro. Like, I'm not. Like the intro is like great intro. You see the parallels between you know the right. apes and the human and Tarzan's parents. Like right. you see the parallels, and right. it was great. But one thing that's that it like Tarzan soundtrack. You know, great songs, but they were songs. Like they didn't they told the story, but they didn't tell the story. If that makes sense. Well, I mean, I think it's a good narrative structure. <laughs> I mean, I didn't say it didn't work. I didn't say it didn't work. <laughs> and here comes the debate. Okay, once again, Son of Man did what it had to do. It all did. Right? Like I said, yeah, like it, like it, like it, like all the Strangers other Disney like movies. me did what yes. it had to do. I mean, it told the story, but you know, its own way. Like you know, like I said, the, the it worked. Like the songs work, and where they put them, like there, I'm like, I'm you know. Straight up, like the songs work where where they're. I where mean, they're Usher Reed did a whole song for the soundtrack. You'll be in my heart. Did what it had to do. Wasn't it on uh Disney Mania. Wasn't his version on Disney Mania? Yes. <laughs> but I'll admit, Everlife's, Everlife's cover, Everlife's yeah. cover of "Strangers Like Me" is probably one of my favorite. I agree. Like, they they did amazing. But yeah, the Tarzan soundtrack is a, it's a great soundtrack. Yeah, like, Tarzan no- was so good. It only needed four songs. Hmm. Only four. <laughs> Only, Only four, four songs. Only four songs. <laughs> Only, four. Only four. Is that really a soundtrack? Is that technically if it's only four songs? Is it really a soundtrack? 
it is when it is for the narrative structure of the <laughs> film. Yep. I, didn't, like I, said, I didn't say it didn't work. I didn't it wasn't say. all over the place like another movie that we previously mentioned. Which one? Hercules. Bless my soul. Herc was on the road. Uh, defeated. But then all of a sudden we get, I give it up. Hope that summer would come along. Like, how how we switch up like that? How sway? Oh no, that's before. That was that's before that. That's always before before they did Zero to Hero. No, that's my point. Like, how do we switch up like on the and with a sound? You know? At least Lion King kept the same sound. At least, at least we got the choir. There the needs to be some choir. Voice. There needs to be some variety. Like you don't want all the songs variety. to sound the same. You want to at least have some type of variety on the soundtrack. Even like Miss Song song sound the same. Even with a narrative stance, it could keep like even when Lion King. We still had them them African beats. We had the Afro beats. <laughs> we had the drums. <laughs> we had Hans Zimmer score easing in. Even with Hakuna Matata, what we get? We get that choir in the middle when they're walking on that little, <laughs> on that little uh, bridge thing. <sighs> but it is consistent. <laughs> with the music, it is consistent. Like what we were talking about with the music, it is consistent. Like each Until music Neil comes in. <laughs> if, if we got talk, if we got talk about the scatting, then I'm gonna talk about Phil. <laughs> You're gonna talk about the the talk singing, <laughs> the talk singing. <laughs> yeah, the talk singing. Yeah, if you gonna talk about the shuba doop the, I'm gonna talk about the talk singing. Okay. Shuba doop the. <laughs> There's a reason why Mushu didn't get a song. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but no, I stand for what I said. Yeah, but I was I was I did I didn't say that the Tarzan soundtrack was terrible or bad. It is top tier. Like the the Tarzan soundtrack is top tier. And like you said, it does tell a narrative structure. It does. It just but, didn't give what it was supposed to give to you. <laughs> I guess I guess like that, I guess. <laughs> but the thing about the Hercules soundtrack is that you know I just like personally. I just like the way the story was told like, through her. How the how the music told the story. That that's why I like I like how the muses were used to tell the story. Well, I guess you could say Phil Collins was technically a muse. I mean, technically, I mean he he was the. I mean he was the composer. Hmm. The I didn't think of that. Like he would be the narrator of the story. It'd be interesting if he actually did narrate. It. Yeah. Like he actually was the voice of like a narrator. That would that would have been interesting. Yeah, it would have. But, I mean, it would have they dropped the ball with that. I thought like that would be really interesting. Now speaking of drop the ball though, the last film on this list. Oh wow. Um the only reason why I say they dropped the ball is because I think the film was released too soon. Mm-hmm. Um, they should have waited until that date changed. <laughs> like, I just, it premiered, it premiered in 99, technically, you know, in Carnegie Hall, mm-hmm. but, you know, worldwide, it was from, in IMAX from like January 1st, yeah, New Year's to April of mm-hmm. 2000, Fantasia 2000, um, wasn't as iconic as the original Fantasia because they tried to. Oh my god! Oh, I get, I get why they always got beef between Mickey and Donald now because they tried to recreate the iconic Sorcerer's Apprentice with Donald Duck trying to get all these animals on Noah's Ark, mm-hmm. and it just didn't work. And then they tried to. They, I think they played Sorcerer's Apprentice in there, and it's like. Give us something. Like, either go all in or don't. The only, like, it just, I don't know. It just felt like the first Fantasia took more risk, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know, because when we get, when they did Night on Ball Mountain, and, you know, you saw a little Satan with these demons from hell, and you're like, ooh, that's Disney? Whoa. And then there's this one I did, like, I forgot what it was called. It was like the last one. It was like a, a, uh, nature sprite and she's you know f- like a spirit and she's going over all this dead land and she's bringing 
you know, flowers in bloom and all that stuff, and an elk is walking around with her, and then all of a sudden this firebird phoenix comes in, just burns everything, mm-hmm. and tries to kill her. I was just like, that was good. That was good. I just wish they kept going. But yeah, I mean, they had some Beethoven. You know, it was it was a good animation, but I remember the whale. That's the main one I remember. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was yeah. Yeah, and see, I need to rewatch Fantasia 2000 because it, it's been a I, minute. I feel like Disney should kind of redo that, but make it more pop, popish as opposed to, I mean, you could add, you know, you could still have, you know, classical music, but but make it a little bit edgier. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, have like maybe instrumental, like if they have rights to certain songs, like have like kind of like classical instrumentals of those songs, like contemporary songs. That actually be really cool. And put like animation with it, I, I don't know. I feel like they should retry it and see yeah. how it goes. And, you know, just to get people excited about animation again, because yeah. I, I don't know. I just had, like, people yeah. still people still like animation, but I feel like, I feel like oh. It's the executives who don't like animation. <laughs> Facts. I mean. Facts. I'll just put it like this. They stopped caring about animation about this 2D animation about this time. And they said, you know what? We'll throw a bone to like three more movies and then we're going to just switch up completely. Mm-hmm. We got some time. Do you want to talk about it or do you want us to save no. that for later? No. no. Okay. No. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Why not? So the last few 2D films. Um, the Disney Renaissance. Well, okay, okay. So here comes the debate part. Is this considered Disney Renaissance? We we were kind of talking about off camera. You know, mm-hmm. I agree with you. I think it is. I do think it is considered. You know, the Renaissance, but because it's the new millennium and we're in, you know, the two thousands now, it's like it's kind of kind of wavering yeah. off. You know, yeah. that effect. And we're going to skip over dinosaur. Yeah, because it didn't have any musical numbers. Like it had, it had a decent score. You know, it just wasn't marketed properly, and it was mm-hmm. kind of boring. But whatever, I mean, now it's marketed pretty well. Though, I, so. had, I still had those hand <laughs> toys. <laughs> yep. <laughs> toys that yep. <laughs> you have to put over your hand. Yeah, I got that. Like that was good marketing, but you know, they killed a lot of Michael Eisner killed a lot of Disneyland rides just to market that movie and. I ain't gonna forget that. Mm-hmm. But the Emperor's New Groove. Love this movie. <laughs> I love this movie. Like the intro. What's his name? Cusco. Yep. So we go like a perfect world begins and ends in <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> like it, yeah, Sting, good. great job. Great job writing the music for this. You would have had a better job with his original score. Speak on it. Speak on that documentary called Sweatbox. Speak so on it. So y'all need okay. So y'all need to look up this uh, documentary. I might provide a link in the description if I can find it. Um, it's called the Sweatbox. So Sting's wife, um, she was in film school at the time, and she was recording when Sting got the job to be on the Emperor's New Group, which was originally called The Kingdom and the Sun. The Kingdom and the Sun, and the cast was relatively the same, except Pacha was a little skinny dude voiced by Owen Wilson, and it were and they were going to do Prince and uh, the Prince and the Popper basically. And Isma had an amazing song called "Snuff Out the Light." Shame on them for not even keeping that in. Earth the Kid would have killed it. Like she, like <laughs> the animation that I saw in it, and then like if you they put the song on like the Emperor New Grove soundtrack. But mm-hmm. like, they should have kept that in the movie somehow. Because Eartha Kitt, she 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 did what she did, and just to see the deterioration, because the same guy who wanted who um who did Lion King, he he pitched and directed this movie originally before they before they brought in uh, Mark Dendel who did Castle Dance. Mm-hmm. You know, so you kind of see that, you know, edgy, you know, Warner Brothers style humor in, you know, the final product. But this was supposed to be like a two hour epic. It was like Lion King meets Aladdin, 
Prince and the Popper, Sting had like all these songs, some were kind of corny, but a lot of them had, it was giving me some, some hunchback. It was giving me hunchback, but the question lies was, were they going to do what they did in Tarzan? Because a lot of them were Sting singing. But, you know, the question is, was that just demos? We don't know. I don't think we're ever going to know unless, you know, decide to do the movie. Right. But, you know, or show the the steals. But it's like, you know, this this brought up a bigger discussion now. It's uh, the moment that happened. The moment they said, you know, this, this Peter Schneider, who was over the animated films, he's like, this isn't going to work because... It's too musically. It's it's uh, it doesn't have that Disney oomph that we've had since Hercules. You know, can we start getting more this, this, this? And they said no more musical numbers. And you know, you see that in Emperor's New Groove. You know, I mean, you get you get like you. They made a joke about where Crunk give you know gave himself his own theme song. Yep. But, you know, it's a hilarious movie. You know, it's got good music yep. in it. You know, the jazzy themes and stuff. But, yeah, Not it's... Here. I'll put that... I'll turn it to a flea. And I'll put that thing in a box. Put that box in another box. In and box. another box. In another box. And I'll mail the box to myself. And I'll smash it with a hammer. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. It's dinner time. Like, no, that is a hilarious <laughs> movie. You know, it's just like, it's interesting... That this was the essentially the beginning of the end for real, because mm-hmm. after that, you know, it was just scores from here on out. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, so me, or one song, either a score or one song. Yeah. Because can we talk about one that's probably between 2000 and 2002? Treasure Planet. Treasure. There are two before it. Oh. That's why I said it's just. <laughs> I'll just put it like this. There's Atlantis, had a mm-hmm. cool score. Then there's Lilo and Stitch. Wonderful. Hawaii score. Roller Coaster Wide. Hawaii Roller Coaster like, Wide. That was, that was it. Like, that shit was, you know, and the Elvis Presley, like, like, be, like, loved it. Loved it. Yep. Like, Lilo and Stitch is one of those just really original movies that I that that's why I can kind of consider this period like the very very end of the Disney yeah. Renaissance because Lilo and Stitch was original. Like yeah. it was like one of those like wow they really thought this up like this blue little alien coming to Hawaii to be learn how to be right. a better person and be this little girl's pet this weird little girl's pet like what like, <laughs> like, what? like it works but yeah uh, you know they tried one more time disney disney animators you know the animators and directors from the little mermaid they tried one more time to bring some life you know some 2d life if you will and we got treasure planet i cannot tell you i cannot tell you how many times i've seen this movie how much i love this movie because you know i'm a big pirate person you know i love Mm -hmm. pirates i love treasure Mm -hmm. island like everything about it and the fact that it takes place in space yeah and like very original very even though it's based on something it's still very original and yeah. you know i'm still here seeing like you know when when uh silver's like i'm gonna keep you on my wing like i'm i'm gonna keep my mm-hmm. eye on you and just and you know jim's like don't do me any favors and all this stuff and then mm-hmm. they start going i'm still here and then you see like i call it the disney transition song where you see right. the character you know, transitioning, and that's Jim, you know, starting to, you know, shows how good of a sailor he is, he's coming to be, and also him and Silver, you know, having this bond, and you see why Jim is kind of closed off, because you see his dad, you know, leaving, and you're like, oh, so that's why he's the way he is, okay, like, you get you get it, and you start to understand it, and there's a beautiful song, beautiful animation, like, it kind of had, like, it rented, like if you look at it, it's like oh this animation is kind of different right. it's, it's kind of different because it kind of mixed like what that 3d type with 2d and it's like oh okay I, i'm digging this and i think the reason why people don't consider that like this these four films to be part of the disney renaissance because they didn't do so well at the box office that yeah. because they consider treasure planet a flop so it's yeah. like and it that, was really good it was 
and now it's underrated. Now it's for trying to chase the trends. That's why that's what you get for trying to chase the trends because you know everyone around them was you know saying, oh, we gotta do this and we gotta do this, and it killed you know any hype for you know this two D animation. I they honestly, um, I think it was Clemens and Musker, but uh, yeah, Clemens and Musker who directed this movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, that makes perfect sense. What? They got set up. <laughs> they got they set, set up? all the way up. Okay. So imagine you're Disney and you feeling yourself, right? Mm-hmm. You you feeling yourself big time. Big big time, you know, mm-hmm. nobody can nobody can check you. You know, you're Disney. Um, you say, mm-hmm. I'm going to release my movie called Treasure Planet, November 27, 2002. And yeah, it's a little different. It's a science fiction adaptation of Treasure Island. You know, it's new. It's mm-hmm. fresh. But um, mm-hmm. you're going up against a whole f- new franchise that just released their second movie. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Oh. That's why it that got makes killed. so much they sense. That makes they so much sense. Why it, that makes yeah. so much sense why it flopped. Because when I tell you, yeah. every single Harry Potter movie has made over yeah. a billion dollars at the box office. Yeah. That makes so yeah. much yeah. sense, and I they guarantee you, they knew that. And yeah. because they got set up, Ted Elliott and Terry yeah. Rossio, the next year they came out with another beginning franchise yeah. based on Disney. Yep. Pirates of the Caribbean. They wrote Pirates of the Caribbean together, and all the like the first three, the first three films, and it's right. like, and there yeah, you have they it. they did not stand. <laughs> like imagine you get between between them. There was Chamber of Secrets, Eight Mile, Die Another Day, oh. Eight Crazy Nights, which was something for the adults. Like it did not stand a chance. It didn't. Yeah, they it definitely put it in the wrong yeah. wrong <laughs> like, time. That's- that was. It was bad, and then if they tried now, to release now you it say in those December, titles, I'm like, yeah, they they thought. And they then, thought because- and then if they thought it was going to work in December, guess what came out one month later? What Two powers. Out? So. Oh yeah! Oh oh yeah! That uh yeah yeah, that, yeah. it was set up. Yeah, they either should they either should put it out that summer yeah. or like in October or September. <laughs> yeah, and Matt Noel, um, Spider Man came out that year too. Oh, it did. <laughs> like, oh, it, it was, they had no chance. They had no chance. <laughs> like, if they had waited a year and uh-huh. did this like back to back with Pirates of the Caribbean, like it would have worked. It would have worked. But yeah, they were set up. They got set up. Yes, that sucks. That <laughs> so sucks. yeah, it makes like think looking in hindsight, it makes perfect sense why it did not do well at the box office. Nobody was checking for it. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, like, it's like if you take your kid and you're like, do you want to see Treasure Planet or you want to see Harry Potter? Harry Potter. You, you feel me? So it's like, sorry. Back then, that's the choice I would have taken. good. Right. But back then, that was the choice that I would have taken. Yeah. That's, you know, uh, yeah. And and the thing is, yeah, I'm looking it up and it's like it killed. They they planned, I think, two sequels. Um, it was going to be a trilogy. And it just it didn't work because it didn't do what the because they relied too much on you know where people are gonna see this and I still like it's when things like this and another movie that came out I think seven years later that just feels like a it's a setup you know be now I'll go ahead and say it you know because we're not gonna talk about. Look, Brother Bear was cool. You know, it had Phil Collins. Home in the Range, we ain't talking about that. Chicken Little, whatever. Meet the Robinsons and Bolt. But Princess and the Frog, it got set up just like Treasure Planet because they knew good and damn well those kids want to see Alvin and the Chipmunks, the sequel. I didn't see They did not. <laughs> Nobody did. But, you know, they, like, they put it up against you know, a sequel in a, you know, in a franchise. They put up against a franchise film versus, you know, something that was completely different. Remind me, how well did Princess and the Frog do at the box office? It broke expectations, didn't it? It it did. It just, it wasn't... What they wanted, I guess? Yeah, they were hoping it was going to get a billion. 
Um, they, the budget was 105 million. It made back almost three uh, 300 million. It was 271 million, mm -hmm. but they were hoping they were going to get a little higher. And <sighs> there's some problematic stuff there too. But I ain't getting in that because I'm. I remember when the original movie was supposed to be Tiana's name was Maddie, and she was uh, what's her name Charlotte's maid and all this stuff. I remember that. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Um. Yeah, Friends on the Other Side was a good song though, and almost it was. That was a good song. It was. I, I wish they didn't get ready. And almost there. I'm almost there. Yeah. Almost there. Well, we'll talk she love her. Yeah. Love yeah. her. That was. Good. And we'll but we'll talk about the resurgence next episode. The right. resurgence. They shouldn't have got Oprah to play her mama. But on that note, <laughs> you said they shouldn't. They shouldn't have got Oprah to play her mama. They I, thought that got was I thought that was Alfred Woodard. Oh, are you talking about the live? I thought that was Alfred Woodard. Who was who played her mama? Was it? God damn it, it is Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I remember how they kept marketing it. They they thought they were going to get us oh, in the theater. By I saying, swear, oh, I thought please. it was Alfred Woodard. I swear I thought it was Alfred Woodard. Who voiced her mama? <laughs> the Mandela effect. <laughs> But yeah, you say it would have yeah. Silly, silly <laughs> on that effect. note. Yeah, that's why I said on that <laughs> note. Uh, we got the uh, queen over here. Yes, the queen Leo. What's up? What's yes. up? We'll, we'll be back. And the Duke of Aquarius, you know. <laughs> 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 yep, good old Disney. Yeah, this this is when this is when it got different. But yeah, we're definitely gonna get into how Prince and the Frog got set up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll get into it. Yeah. But th yeah, this was good. This was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we finally finished the the Disney Renaissance. Yeah. The Renaissance. So yeah. And I will say yeah. Emperor's New Groove, Lilo and Stitch, Treasure Planet, and Atlantis Lost Empire are all cult classics. I agree. And the reason why they aren't considered in the Disney Renaissance is because they didn't make enough money. Mm -hmm. And I'm sticking by that. <laughs> Bunch of elitist. Let me stop. <sighs> enough about Disney if we're talking about elitism. But, yep. Peace, y'all. Peace. <laughs>